You know we're gonna be late, right? We have like five minutes. And two minutes. Oh gosh, gotta keep going. And the worst part is we're not even like dressed for this. That's okay, we'll get dressed for this here. Yeah, I'm really, really excited. Wait, we're on the, we're on Wrong the floor. floor. Live from the TV studio of Marywood University's Learning Commons, it's Late Night Mary Welcome yeah. to tonight's special <laughs> guest, Marywood's president, Sister Mary. And here come the girls that are in the elevator way too much this season themselves. Please welcome your hosts, Rachel Eiler and Ann Zukowski. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Late Night Marywood. We hope you all enjoyed last week's episode where John Farrow told us about his latest sports project and members of Grace's Downfall rocked our studio. And we are excited to bring that excitement back for Marty. Can we get a drum roll sound effect, please? <laughs> our season finale! Thanks, Marty. <laughs> but seriously, we are very excited because this is our season finale. It's our last episode of our first season. If you guys are just tuning in for the first time tonight, we have done a lot on the show. We started with Black Tie Stereo, who is an amazing, amazing band. Improv Beyond, who is one of the funniest groups right on this campus. And we've also had Static in the Attic, and they're right from Carbondale. They have some great music. And of course, we can't forget about our amazing Marywood students like graphic design major Emmanuel Ajay and adjunct professor NWVIA radio host Lisa Mozzarella. And then we've also had James Barrett, who is an amazing singer and songwriter. We've also had Sister John Michelle Southwick. We also had singer songwriter and Marywood student Natalie Burke. Also singer songwriter Alyssa Lazar and the Marywood Jazz Ambassadors perform right here in the studio. We have had so many other Marywood members and local singer-songwriters on this show. It's definitely been a fun ride meeting and inviting so many cool personalities into our studio. And tonight, it's not done yet because we've got even more of a fun show in store for you. We have Marywood president, Sister Mary Persico, and Marywood student rapper from Scranton, the Silo. Very exciting. We wanted to invite Sister Mary onto our last show for the last episode to pretty much recap everything she has done in her first year as president. So many amazing things have happened right on this in this school year on this campus. Besides our show being one of the first Kickstarters, let's see if maybe we can summarize this year in a Marywood Minute. <laughs> yeah, so wow, Marywood in a Minute, let's oh, okay. hear it. Let's start, ready? So this year we had about 300 new students come to Marywood. We've had a big celebration for Marywood Centennial of 100 years. We also had the inauguration and a liturgy blessing ceremony for a new university president, Sister Mary Persico. And back in October, we can't forget about the clown scare that happened. November, we recognize veterans and those who've served for our country at Marywood's Veterans Day. And then the Marywood community reunited at our annual Christmas tree lighting in the rotunda. And we had the strategic resource allocation that turned the five colleges at Marywood to three. Marywood also got a new provost and a new vice president of business affairs. And in, coming up in a few weeks, the 90th, uh, the 90th class will be graduating already. 99th. Oh my wow. gosh. That's amazing. I can't yeah. believe like the top things that have happened at Marywood are just so amazing in these past nine months and it's been a lot and especially a minute. Yeah. So lots has happened for sure on Marywood's campus and a lot more is about to happen on tonight's show of Late Night. We're going to take a first break uh, but we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Late Night Marywood, the season finale. I think we have a fun show in store for tonight, especially with this episode, because it's not just our last episode, but our 10th episode, which was a goal this year. Uh, we do a lot of preparation for this show, and it's, it's always worth it. And also, we spend a lot of time together. Sometimes we think it's a little too much time together. 
<laughs> Definitely a lot of time together. Do you, do you think we know everything about each other possibly yet? Possibly. I feel like we should because not only have we done this show, but you are my orientation leader. Yeah. Um, I tried doing this though with my roommate, what we're about to do, and I can honestly say it did not work out well. <laughs> so, uh, but let's find out and we can do 10 questions. So we're basically gonna, you know, do like 20 questions, but ask each other 10, so five each. Yeah, so let's get started. Mad. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, ready? You can go first. Okay, <laughs> this, is, this is the big one. What is my favorite Broadway show? I want to <laughs> say The Phantom of the Opera? Yeah. Guys, I just creeped on her Instagram and, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's the first day of May, so it's like, may you think of me it's great oh. it's so cute what <laughs> okay. a nice connection to today may 1st <laughs> all right so my turn uh where am i originally from okay this one always confuses me because you've told me 10 different places okay. so you're at like you live in pennsylvania but you have a house over in new jersey I so <laughs> what is the answer where am i, I originally from you're originally from new jersey but you moved to pa ding 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 you got it right good job i don't know the town though so don't ask me That's okay, <laughs> okay. answer the question I live on a farm. Everyone knows that. So what animals do I own? I honestly don't know. I don't even know if I knew you were living on a farm. <laughs> do you want to take a guess? Um, Start with the basic, of course. OK, you probably have a goat yes. and some ducks. N used to, but yeah. OK, so okay, you have two so of them. Right. OK, so you have goats, ducks. Uh -huh. I don't know. What else? Think of basic farm animals. Um, do you have any horses? <laughs> I don't. I've always wanted one. Do you have a donkey? <laughs> no, I wish. So OK, okay I, have, I have goats. I had pigs, I had chickens, ducks, and I have a, two dogs and two cats. Okay, Pretty so good. I had like two out of... <laughs> two out of like five. <laughs> so I kind of know you so far. Okay. So far, okay. So what is my favorite word that's a word I like to think that describes me? I, I don't know an exact word that describes you, but like you just, I don't know, you say... I don't know even what you say. I don't think you ever describe yourself to me. Yeah, in this I don't really say this word often, but I like to hope so. <laughs> when she says a word and doesn't tell me. Okay, okay. I'll give you a hint. Well, it has six letters. Six. <laughs> that could go with any ad. To Starts with A, there. just like my name. Awesome. Kind of close. I can't do math. I can't count in my head letters. Okay, do you give up? Uh, amaze. That's not amazing. Yeah, that's one of my favorite words. Amazing. Good job. And is that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's All six right, letters or not, on. but that's that's why we're not math majors. Um, okay, I am the youngest of how many siblings? I want to say two. No, no, like three total. No. Really? Is it just well, you and your oh, sister? No, like three total, like me plus them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have three okay. siblings. <laughs> that's yeah. that's a good. I know one. you're the youngest. It, bonus points if you can name them. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> I should have creeped on your family, I guess, on I Facebook have... together. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, you go. I know a little bit about your sister, so that's cool. You do. Cool okay. So this is always my fun fact whenever classes are um, saying, oh, tell me a fun fact, like the icebreakers. Mm -hmm. So what is my favorite type of food? <laughs> Come on, you know this. Oh, oh, well, like. There could be two answers Marywood for this. food or like. Like just food, food in food, general. Like if you're home, like and your mom's like, oh, what do you want for dinner? Food. If I were to go to Walmart right now, what would I get? Uh, pizza, tortina rolls. Yep. Tortina good job. pizza rolls. All right, your turn. I almost forgot about that. Okay. Wow. What is my dream job? I know you really want to go to London to work at BBC. That's it. And you pretty much want to be a journalist, and I don't know what else. I have about five different dream jobs, but BBC but is right. the top one. I want to be right. the first, one of the first female American lead news anchors at BBC. <laughs> Very exciting. All right, so this is another one of my fun uh, facts about myself that I hope you know. I probably told you this when we did summer orientation. So when is my birthday? You know what's funny is that we were talking about this the other day too, like because we were talking about it um, during, when we were writing the show. Right. I know it's June. Okay, come on. And I know it's like the same week as my brother's birthday. If I give you like a countdown, it's, do you think you could figure out the math right now? <laughs> We're not math majors. No. Um, I want to say it's June 25th. Is that your final answer? I don't know. Should it be? Yes. Yes. I'm locking that is it my in. Birthday. Lock in. Uh, a okay. million question showdown. I'm impressed. Okay. Let's change the show. Okay. My last question for you is I have two different life mottos. What is one of them? I know the one is jazz it up. 
that's are you sorry? <laughs> no. You, well, okay, it's a no. phrase that you say pretty often when I don't we're say jazz it up. Wait, what's the word you say? Zazz. Oh, zazz. zazz up. <laughs> I tell everyone to zazz it up when they have to do like a voice recording or, or something because it means like with energy, just like nice. that. Like we zazz it up on the show. I meant to say zazz. No, not you jazz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, that is not one of my life mottos, wow. though. Do you want to take another guess? It's um, a song. I don't know. One of them is a song. Okay, I'll be tell you humble both of and them. kind. Yeah, that is one of them. Is it's, that one of the ones? Always stay humble and kind. Okay. And then you are enough, so enough. It's unbelievable how enough you oh, are. Oh, I felt I. And I that, that that was said by Sierra Bagos, who's from Phanto the Opera. See what I did there? I wow. linked my two questions. Very nice. I'm very smart. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Okay, so do I have the last question? You, yeah, right. you can ask the last question. So when question, I go to the gym, what is my favorite piece of equipment to go on you at the gym? I didn't know you go to the gym. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know we had time to go to the gym. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, no, uh, uh, she, you go to the gym way more than I do. Okay, favorite piece of equipment? Like, are we talking about weights or cardio or Any class? of the equipment in the gym at Marywood. I haven't been to the gym in a while, so I'm trying to, like, remember the setup of I everything. I usually Snapchat this if I... I don't get to go on Snapchat. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to take a guess. Cause, okay, is it weightlifting? No. Oh, it's not. It's cardio, then. <laughs> it's cardio. This girl does a lot of cardio. Okay. Is it just running? I do run in the beginning, but elliptical, that's the answer. Well, yeah, okay. Okay, I can see that one. That was good. Because <laughs> you get the I don't know who won this. That was, I don't really wow. know who won. Um, I think uh, it might be a tie. Uh, let's and call it a tie because we're nice yeah. to people like that. <laughs> it looks like we know a lot more, more about each other. Less. Yeah. <laughs> uh, than we actually thought. And it looks like it is another time to take a break, but we'll be right back after this, so stay tuned. Welcome back with our first guest tonight. He is a Marywood Student Study Broadcast Production who is starting to be a popular face around this and sound on this campus. He was a main news anchor for TVM News, a performer in Improv Beyond, and on campus he has won and competed in the Story Slam Poet. Recently he released his long-awaited debut album called In Due Time. Last week, he, congratulations on this too, he was the best of the weekender 2017 for best rapper so please welcome tonight our special guest terry thompson mm, thank so you for welcome having to me. the show thank uh, you so you're a rapper and you just came out with your first album yeah yeah tell them your name so nasilo how'd you get that because so, i've always been curious yeah so it's actually my middle name oh, um, really yeah and my it's it was my uncle's name and my mom, when she was writing it down on the birth certificate she actually spelled it wrong oh really so <laughs> i'm a walking typo but okay. that's all good. But you're a great walking typo. I, I try. I second I try. that. You're like Thank one you. of our favorite walking typos. I get that a lot, actually. Yeah, really? You know, to Am be I glad? <laughs> Who do we have to compete against for this? I mean, really. There's okay. only me. Awesome. Um, yeah, so you are not only a student at Marywood, but mm -hmm. you are one of the, uh, a rapper, an upcoming rapper. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about how you got started in doing that? Yeah, so um, I've been writing music for a long time. Um, started in middle school and in high school. But like when I got here, uh, Marywood, um, had the equipment to like use and I wanted to take as, as like a big of advantage as I could with that so I'm like might as well start making some music and like taking it seriously so when I got here is really when I started taking it seriously mm. and it's been great ever since so a lot of people have been waiting for probably longer than six months maybe a year now for your uh, first album yeah, Can you tell us so. a little bit about the process of the sound behind mm -hmm. the album so yeah I've been hyping up in due time on social media for probably a year um, and I, I chose the name in due time just for a play on words so when people ask me when's it coming out I'll be like in, in due, due time, time. So <laughs> just chill but yeah the sound I was going for I wasn't I'm not trying wasn't trying to make anything too like serious or too like hard because there's very different genres of rap there's like you know the typical like you know New York sound and there's like a West Coast sound I was trying to go for something very much me um, mm -hmm. and I'm a very fluid person as it is. I don't really take myself too seriously. So I was trying to go for a sound that kind of reflected me. So if you listen to it, there's a bunch of different like attitudes and moods on it. So if you can go from Fluber, which is a very fun and like elastic song to the last song on the album, which is called For Love. And it's very um, intuitive song. It's about like prospering and like wanting to get better. So there's a bunch of different al moods on the album or mixtape. So yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of fun. 
So when you came to Marywood, what, and you, you found out that you had all this equipment, was it just an impulsive thing to say, I mean, because you are a broadcast digital mm -hmm. media major, so how do you kind of link the two together? Um, it's very easy. So I just use all the skills they taught me in video production, pre video production do, and just carry it over to me um, in the studio. Audio production definitely helped a lot. Um, I didn't, it didn't click right off the bat. Um, I actually took a YouTube writing class with uh, Dr. Watanis and Dr. Uh, McMillan. And I actually started out doing poetry. So I made spoken word videos on YouTube and all that. And I'm like, wait, I could do music as well. <laughs> so I just like transitioned. It was a very easy transition. But um, yeah, it took a lot of learning, like learning how logic works and then learning how a bunch of other digital, digital audio workstations work, like um, Audition and Pro Tools. But it's, it's a fun process. And I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So I saw on some of your other songs on your album that just came out that you're working with other people in the community. Can you tell us a little bit about who else is featured on the album? Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I rap with these two guys. They're my best friends. Uh, their names are Corey Kelly and Marcus Moody. Uh, Marcus goes by the name Goaty, which you saw on the album. They're, re they're really cool guys. They're really um, intuitive. They're very conscious. They know what they're about. Um, and they really helped me start off and give me the confidence to start making music. Um, and then... The girl who's featured on the first album, her name's Tiff. I have a philosophy class with her, and she's just, she's awesome. Her wordplay is crazy. She wrote her verse in less than five minutes when we were in the studios. I'm like, yo, just throw a verse on this real quick. And she's like, ah, all right, cool, cool, cool. So she started writing, and it was like nothing to her. So I work with a lot of talented people, and I'm very blessed to work with them and have them in my life. It's really cool. What kind of... Um, <clears throat> drives your you know you rapping what you said you do the story slam and, mm -hmm. and word poetry so how do you kind of come up with these ideas and, and the song ideas and stuff um it just depends on whatever mood i'm in um i'm a very creative person at times and sometimes i'm not uh, but it just depends on whatever mood i'm in if i'm like driving around at night and i want like a uh, a nighttime song i'll just like oh i'll just pull over and like write something real quick to match the mood i'm in if i'm in a really happy mood i'll write up a song that matches the mood i'm in um, but there are also times I'm just really feeling like really stagnant and those are the really hard times where it's like I, I want to write something but I really can't because I don't want to I don't want to force the lyrics out because mm -hmm. then you can really tell in a song when the lyrics are forced out and because it reflects it, it reflects like you're not being you you're not being what you can be so yeah just whatever mood I'm in reflects in the songs and it's really cool something I really like especially about your album is the album cover the photo that you have <laughs> of you as a child mm -hmm. how did and, and also your logo on yeah. your hat and mm -hmm. stuff I really love that so what can you just explain those a little bit and why you chose those yeah of course so that um, that picture is a yearbook picture of me from eighth grade um, <laughs> I had this huge afro my mom was begging me to cut it and that was the last day I actually had the afro and I put something in my hair that day I don't know <laughs> what it was but it just poofed it out and I'm just sitting for the pictures like hey mom and so <laughs> it was great um so that was that and the logo actually um when I write the name Nasilo I usually play with the o at the end I write a little face or something so I'm like why don't I just make this my logo so I actually had a, an envelope from Marywood uh, it was a uh, telling me that my past due bill was Past due, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's cool. So I actually wrote something on the, I wrote it on the back for like, cause I've been like, rough drawing it for like a while now. So I finally drew it perfectly. I'm like, this is great. So I scanned it, I photoshopped it, filled in the lines, put it on a hat. Hat cost me a lot of money, um, and yeah. Well, so. hopefully you paid that past due in the process of oh, all yeah, of yeah, it. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Sister Mary, it's yeah. all good. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us and talking to us. We're going to get to hear more of your sound later on the show, and we look forward to seeing and get to see your performance here in the studio. Uh, don't go anywhere because up next we're going to have Marywood President joining us right here in the studio. Welcome back. Our next guest joining us tonight is probably one of the most popular people on campus. She has been with us since last July and was inaugurated this year. Not only is she driven to continue to make this university so amazing, but she does everything she can to make students from all over the world feel like this is their home. Please welcome University President Sister Mary Persico. Thank you, Anna and Rachel. I really Thank appreciate you. being here. We appreciate you coming on. Yes. We know you are a very busy woman making, you just do so many amazing things on this campus. Well, that's because I love it here. I'm I glad. really do. By the way, I, I can just see uh, 
Terry being on the Jimmy Fallon show some night or uh, one of the on the Ellen show yeah. or <laughs> doing a rap thing on Good Morning America. He was fantastic. Yeah, yeah definitely. Really we good. Love him. Yeah, I'm nervous being after oh, him. Oh, don't be. <laughs> Great. Don't be. Don't yeah, be. So. You are, are so amazing. And this is your first almost now, a, a full year basically mm -hmm. of being the president of Marywood. Can you kind of just uh, tell us how it's been for you? Yeah, it's been. I, I would say it's gone by in a blur because it's been really fast, but actually I enjoyed just about every minute of it. There were, you know, there were a couple of things here and there, but that's life, you know, you run into little obstacles now and again. But I, I enjoyed almost everything about being here and uh, being back, you know, it's like coming home. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a good feeling, it really is. So you used to be an alumni, or you are an um, alumni yeah. of Marywood. So can you tell us a little bit about how Marywood has changed from when you used to attend here? Mm -hmm. Well, if you can believe it, I got, uh, we used to be campus for things that we did that we shouldn't have done. <laughs> and um, I got campus one time for wearing pants. <laughs> here we are <laughs> in our pants all these years later. Um, I got campus for staying out uh, too late, uh, just just hanging out on campus talking to someone, and I uh, crossed the threshold of Madonna Hall just a couple minutes too late, campus again. So those kinds of things don't happen anymore. Actually, we, we talk about them when I get together with my friends who went to school with me. We talk about those things and kind of laugh, and it, it, it just uh, isn't, it, it's not important anymore because what was important is the same thing that's important in Marywood today, and that's that wonderful mission we have and uh, the feeling of being, you know, at home and comfortable uh, in our skins with the people we live with mm -hmm. and, and go to class with. It's, it's, a, it's the same then as it was now. It's just that so many things have changed, but the feeling hasn't changed. Awesome. And you did say that you love it here so far, being our president. Mm -hmm. What has kind of been like your favorite thing out of all the amazing things that you love? Boy, oh, I, I'll tell you, you know, first impressions are sometimes the best. I remember um, as soon as I got here, everybody started telling me, you have to go to freshman orientation. And I said, well, well like, like, what do I do? Just sit there? No, 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 you have <laughs> to really be a part of it. I said, well, what, what do I have to do? And they said, well, just go and talk to the students and their families. And, and then they said, and then you have to lead them through the arch. And I said, wow. Well, I was so amazed at freshman orientation. I was amazed at the, the students who did the orientation, who had been there for a week preparing. I was so amazed at how excited the, the s new students were and incredibly amazed at how their parents were excited. So that whole thing just, you know, got me really back all the way. And at that moment when I walked through the arch and everyone followed me, I thought, Wow, this is the real deal, you know. When I saw how excited they were, that was it. That that hooked me in. But there were other uh, there were other um, important things too, and fun things like the Christmas tree lighting. That was awesome, you know. And I find that people come back on campus from years and years and years gone by, and they come to the Christmas tree lighting. It's really a tradition, and um, all the student things. You know, I, I had to go away uh, a while because I have to do fundraising. I have to go visit alums in other areas of the country. And I liked that. It was fun. But I always wanted to come back to be with all of you. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to be away because mm -hmm. here's, where, here's where everything's happening. It's a, it's a great place to be. Back to orientation, what was probably your favorite part about the whole welcoming first-year students and everything? that went into orientation? Well, I, I think it, it was that uh, moment when we walked through the arch because- I was there with you. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, you know, now you're really Marywood students and this is it for life. You know, if you mm. take this very seriously and uh, you know, we're, we're gonna give you a great education here and you're gonna help us to be better by being the people you are and uh, this is gonna take Marywood into the future. I, I, it just sort of hit me as a very symbolic moment. Mm -hmm. It was like even a little, you know, teary-eyed moment. You know, 
I remember respect. when right before you walked through the arts you said like we're all starting together yeah and that was awesome because mm -hmm. I mean I think that as the freshman class are growing like I think you've grown so much too just in this new role absolutely and you know you have not only been president of, it, of Marywood but you know you've been uh, vice president of like Trinity Health and mm -hmm. you've been principal of Notre Dame how has those experience kind of led you up and you've also been an adjunct professor at Marywood mm -hmm. so has all those jobs and experiences kind of led you to this moment you know I think the the best thing about all of those experiences is um, that that I was in a leadership role and um, it, leadership is not about being in charge it's not about being in control uh, it's about helping people to grow it's about mentoring people and um, I know, you know, you go on job interviews and people say, you know, what honors have you received? Well, that's, to me, that's, that's not an important question. An important question is, what people have you helped? How have people grown? How have people become better because you were a leader in an organization that they were a part of? So I think um, as I, you know, sort of help people grow, mentor them, I grew myself. Mm -hmm. And so I learned you know, t how to, you know, work with people, help people, and just move people to a better place. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what th those, those experiences have helped me to do. Right. And we have a lot of Marywood students who are growing to be leaders one day. What Absolutely. do you think is the most important characteristic of a leader? Well, when I think about what leadership uh, is today, I think we need uh, ethical leadership. Mm -hmm. People who in our world you know, believe in uh, a, a deep ethical code, have high moral values and a high moral character. And that's missing a lot in, mm -hmm. in our world today. I remember reading once that the um, Enron motto was something about high moral character and all of those uh, words, integrity, authenticity, and then they went down the tubes because mm -hmm. they didn't have any of that. And uh, so I think we need to, to be people who can go out into the world and, and you know, be leaders in that way as, as, as good people, not just as good PAs or good architects or good speech pathologists. Be good people. So. Great. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back here with Sister Mary. Welcome back. Tonight is the season finale of Late Night Marywood. Right now we're joined with Marywood President Sister Mary. So Sister Mary, you've been the president of Marywood for about a year now. Right. So since um, stepping into the role as president, what has been probably your favorite memory right now? Favorite memory? There just are so many. I don't <laughs> know if there's a favorite one. Um, I, I loved, um, I loved being, you know, doing things like going to student council meetings, mm -hmm. student government meetings. I just went to one last week, and that, that was a little contentious, but uh, it was okay. It was, it was still, it was still great. Um, I, I actually um, enjoyed, <coughs> although it took me off campus, I enjoyed being with the alumni. Uh, they love Marywood, and they energized me so much because every time I met with them, they they had that same message. He said, what we have become, we have become because of Marywood. Mm -hmm. Marywood made us what we are today, and they would each tell their story. And that, that was the favorite thing, to go out and, and to listen to that. And um, there are just, just so many things. I'm looking really forward to graduation, mm -hmm. not because I want the seniors to graduate, <laughs> but because I, I'll be happy for them, you know, and when, when they're happy, that that's just a, a real good feeling to to know that um, they're leaving here with a good feeling. They're happy, and they're going to make terrific successes of their lives. How do you think like alumni is kind of inspiring and influencing the current students as as well as the graduating class? Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. Uh, they they struggle with that. Mm -hmm. You know, they say, "What can we do?" 
and they say, don't just, uh, they don't say it to me so much, but they say, uh, people always expect alumni to just give money, mm. you know, and yeah, yeah, they have to do that, we know that, but we want to give back, we want to offer internships where we work for some of our students, and we want to maybe come, come on campus if they live close and, you know, uh, do some tutoring, or they want to do service alongside of our students. I mean, the fact that our students do so much service just blows me away. I just... I'm so excited about that, and I'm proud of that. I tell that to people all the time. And they say, you know, I, s I give them how many hours of service the students do, and they go, y are you sure that's right? I go, I'm, I'm positive that's right. And um, other exciting things have been going to the athletic events, mm -hmm. you know, uh, going to the swimming meets and the basketball games, the field hockey games. And this season, you know, I'm a little frustrated because there's so much to do. I can't get out of my mm -hmm. office in time to get over to the fields, but I, I'm going to do it. You know, they have a couple more games, and uh, I'll, I'll get there, but that's that's fun, too. What has been um, some of, you know, you had a lot of goals in the beginning of the semester, mm -hmm. and um, what, kind of now that we're recapping and, and finishing out the year, what, um, how, can you explain a little bit about the goals that we've achieved mm -hmm, and stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, we did have that goal to restructure the university, and um, when Dr. Terrell came on, you know, I, I asked her to take that up upon herself as one of her um, one of her goals, and she did it beautifully. And she reached out and she talked to the deans, she talked to the department chairs, she talked to the departments, and really, um, you know, people don't like change, mm. but um, I think the way she set it up, it's really going to align all of the work that we do in our departments in a way that's interdisciplinary and it's going to help students to learn not just in isolation but with other departments and, and other majors and I think down the line that is really going to be a very good thing for our students and for our education so right now people might not be yay that was terrific mm -hmm. but I think it was <laughs> because I think it's putting us on a, a good path academically um, also, uh, you know, there, there were, you know, I was told that morale wasn't so great here on campus and um, I, I, I did a lot to try to change that because I think the happier we all are, students, faculty, mm -hmm. staff, uh, the better uh, we'll learn and the better community will be and, and then we'll go away from here being better people. So I try very hard to do that um, and, and I hope, you know, I would be interested in knowing if you thought, you know, that was a successful endeavor, but um, that, that was something that was important to me. Mm. In the beginning of the school year, I think um, you had a barbecue at your house, and I that did. was a good way, I guess, mm -hmm. um, for involving the Marywood community. What do you think about possibly doing more events like that in the future, or possibly other ways of mm -hmm. being involved with the community? Well, first of all, I, I loved that barbecue, and we, we're going to do it again. <laughs> so we'll have maybe, maybe even more than one. And then at Christmas time, uh, after the SRA, uh, the students came. Some students came to my home, and and they were concerned about some of the things that happened with that um, SRA report. And we sat down and talked about that. And um, I, I felt it, it was good to have them there, and uh, just to sit around. The Christmas tree was up, and uh, the fireplace was on, so it, it was it was nice. So I, I'd like to continue doing things like that. Um, I'd like to participate in some of the service projects mm -hmm. with students, you know, so we can work hand in hand and side by side. Um, I would like to do uh, some more partnerships with other universities and community colleges, and see us uh, work together to really serve this community of northeastern Pennsylvania because um, I, I just really believe that a university is for the world. Remember that Uni Marywood University for the World mm -hmm. um, inauguration theme? Um, I really would like to really push that hard so that people from the world, from the outside community, can come here and feel free to just be and to enjoy things. I see people from the community in the learning commons and mm -hmm. they're just sitting at the computers reading email or whatever they're doing and I like that is it they just feel like they can walk up the street and come in and as, as long as they're you know just being neighborly and friendly that's great 
you know so those are the kinds of things I'd like to see happen to more be more involved in that's great we love it we aren't done yet we do have more with sister Mary right after this so stay with us Thank you again for joining us. We're almost done with the night, but we do have Sister Mary still with us. We have a couple more questions for you. We're so happy that you could join us tonight. Um, so we were just talking about some of the goals that you had for this year. Mm -hmm. um, what are some new goals for next year in the fall of 2017? Well, um, you know, two days after graduation, we're going to tear down the old um, uh, resource center. You know, I'll be sad to see it go because mm -hmm. uh, it went up when I was a student here. But um, we're going to build the amphitheater there. And um, I'm excited that in that amphitheater we'll be able to have, you know, people like Terry, you know, do some rapping and we can have concerts and we can have uh, theater and we can have jazz. And so, so we can use our students' talents in that place. And I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, I'm just excited to see the new students. And I think we're going to have a really good group of new students. We have more new students this year than we did last year. At least I think we're going to. All indications mm -hmm. point in that direction. And um, we'll have some new faculty. So all the, the new kinds of things uh, lead to change and good change and excitement. And that's what I'm looking forward to. It's really exciting because I know at the open house when I was speaking with Sister, uh, not Sister, sorry, Susan uh, Bolland, uh, sorry, Anne Bolland Chase, right. sorry. Um, she was saying that it was one of the biggest open houses. How does that kind of feel with, you know, wanting to have more enrollment and, you know, making Marywood a university for the world? Well, you know, I couldn't be here. And so one of the students um, texted me a picture of all the people in the open mm -hmm. house. And I just couldn't believe that they were, and it happened twice. We had our two recent open houses. Mm -hmm. So I tweeted those pictures out so that everybody could see how many people were there. It's, it's very exciting, and uh, I think the excitement is going to catch on. I, I've gone out into the community, and people have said things, oh, sister, we hear great things about Marywood. And, and they always tell me how great our students are, mm -hmm. you know, the in the, out in the community. And that, that makes me feel terrific. I love that. That's that's great, and another thing I loved was um, having a Twitter account. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that was so much fun, because um, I, I'm getting to almost a thousand followers now, and um, it's just great every night looking at what people write and what's going on in people's lives and writing messages to people. Mm. It, it makes me feel connected and it's to all of you, and I love it. You know? Do you get a lot of messages or I DMs? Do, I do. <laughs> yeah, some of them are good. Most of them are good. And then we have messages like, um, "Sister, the uh, snow was not <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> was not shoveled in front of my house." Uh oh. <laughs> yes. But we so try to fix those things mm -hmm. when they come. So with finals officially coming, and uh, you you have been through all this, your alumni at Marywood. Do you have any tips for students from like that you followed when you were a student here going to finals? You know. Um, I have to say this, it's, I hope no one from the class of uh, 69, that's my class, ever hears this, but I find you to be much more studious as young men and women than we ever were. Mm -hmm. you, know, we, you know, we stayed up all night and uh, we took notos, and I would never do that today in a million years. Uh, and uh, we sat there and we drank coffee and we fooled around. And we, we just didn't have the same uh, work ethic mm -hmm. that I see you have. Now, I'm sure there's some of that, you know, but I'll go in uh, the architecture building late at night and people are in there and they're really working, or I'll see people working here in the learning commons, or I see people on campus studying together. And uh, so I, I just say, you know, take, take your work seriously. There's a lot of time to play and there's a lot of time to have fun. But uh, if you take your work seriously and you do well, you're going to get that job you need when you get out of here, and you're going to be um, a great Marywood alumna or alumna -ness, <laughs> I would say to anyone. So Really great uh, study survival tip for <laughs> finals by Sister Mary. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we wish you the best as you enter your second year and longer as president. But we're going to take um, a short break. And yeah. when we come back, we have Terry Thompson in the studio performing live. Performing his original song, 96 Nights, please welcome Nasilo. Hey. 
Hey, baby, I can't seem to get you on the phone. I know that there's a lot going on and, and you're busy. But listen, son, I, I just want you to know that I love you. And I know it may not seem a good time for this. There's just a few things that I need to tell you. So just listen, okay? Yeah. For you, mama. Yeah, last cold day like it was my birthday And you looking like you starting to split at the seams Feel like every day tends to be your worst day And I can't sit back and pretend like I know what you mean And I know this weather tends to make you anxious And I know you listen closer when they saying stuff People tend to latch on to the ones that ain't nothing and I'm just sitting here working Yeah, cause we some young kids in an old city and they vibing with me Mentally unprepared for people to put their trust in me Long nights like this when it's easy to lose my consciousness Seeing people for what they are and not as obstacles I suppose it stems from a lack of conversation Late at night not talking, we just lay in there waiting You see the jack runs through you faster when your plate's full You got one idea for sentence you would never want to be wasteful Know you're out of work, hit you up cause you're not at home Sometimes I feel like it's me who really needs to hit the road You want your girl's story so at least I know you're not alone But who that boy to the left of you, the one that's on his phone 96 nights, the drives are getting more frequent. I miss the round of applause every time that my scene ends. You're always out with your friends wearing that dress with the sequins. And I'm just sitting here working. Yeah. Let each relationship teach you to and remind you that no matter what, you're worthy of love, honey. You're worthy of big love, real love, kind love, genuine love, true love. But what's most important have to love you, love yourself, and be true to yourself, always. I feel like it's been years since we had a real conversation. So yeah, I got your text, but I really don't got the patience. Unfortunate temptation, committed hesitation. See, so yeah, I'm on the tracks, but the train already left the station. And I'm done with all the small talk. Your girl's got your back, but I've been in this for the long haul. Yeah, I know how you feel. If one falls, then we all fall. But how far is that drop, though? That was some dumb talk. The moonlight got me acting different. I've been losing sight of it all and acting way more pessimistic. My mama told me get my act together before I miss it. I just feel like they only love me when I'm standing at a distance. Yeah, 96 nights, the drives happen more often. Feel like the dream will come together when I'm laying in my coffin. When you listen to the song, I hope you hear a little caution. I'm just sitting here working. Yeah. Right, and I, you know, I, I didn't listen then, and it didn't make sense until now, now that I'm older. But I want to tell you what she told me. And she said, if you love something, set it free. And if it comes back, it is yours. But if it doesn't, it never was. I love you. I want you to be okay, and I want you to call me. And just know that if you need to talk, I'm here. See ya. Oh, you mama. It's all for you. We are out of time for this evening, but you can go definitely follow Terry Music by looking him up on Facebook and SoundCloud. So go check out Nasilo. Rachel and I want to thank you for joining us. It's hard to believe that five months ago, we made a goal of 10 shows, and here we are here on the 10th show. We are so excited. As always, you guys, make it a great week and an even better summer. Mm -hmm.